Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today I just wanted to go over a couple tips for installers uh, replacing air conditioning systems and attics, uh, as well just keeping your uh, customers comfortable, um, maybe when you can't get to them. All right. Uh, so, why would an HVAC tech need stand-up rolling air conditioners? All right. So I just so you know, I have a few of these units. All right. And these are typically what I use them for is solely to keep my customers happy, all right? Uh, just say um, I sell a job. I want to be able to sell a job, but say I can't get to it fast enough, you know, um, or there's an emergency or there's a friend or somebody needs air conditioning just for a spot room or something like that. These I have these 9,000 BTU units. Um, in regards to the brand, I'm just, I'm not really going over the brands here. You know, these have worked pretty well for me. These stand up air conditioners with the flex ducting. All right, I can put this right out the window. All right, and push the window down to it. Use some blue tape, whatever I need to do. This gets screwed on the back, it gets adjustable like this. All right, I can put a pan underneath of it on the bottom for the wheels just to make sure uh, that there's no condensate getting in the house. This particular one, the newer ones, actually um, have a hotter exhaust and what they do is they actually try to evaporate the moisture as it's um, getting rid of the moisture outside all right so there's no condensate build up in the bottom all right so these units you know you may have a few of them just to pop in somebody to keep them cool for a day that's what we're talking about you know you go to a new customer's house you're selling them a job you know you you can't get to it tomorrow maybe you need to hold them off for one day you know maybe they can just use a couple um, air conditioning units like this all right I've tried these. Now the other, the, here's the flip side. Right? I've I've also used these stand-up air conditioners in order to replace units in the middle of summer. It's in a hot attic. Maybe they don't even have an attic fan in. All right. Um, maybe I might suggest getting an attic fan. Okay. If that was the case, and if they did want to go ahead with that, and I do believe in attic fans. I do believe that uh, the the actual energy uh, that you take off of your heating and cooling system or your cooling system, all right? The energy that you save it by rejecting the heat up in the attic, most of the time, I believe, will reduce your energy consumption the same or maybe even pass a little bit on your air conditioning system, all right? Um, I usually set a thermostat of an attic fan at about 90 degrees, all right? So, but anyway, just say I I uh, suggest maybe we put an attic fan in, okay, maybe it has side vents, maybe it has soffit vents and there's no ridge vent, then maybe we put an attic fan in, all right? But regardless of that, it's hot in the attic in the middle of the summer, all right, um, and you're replacing a unit, you know, you're going to go up there, and, and in my area down here, we're at the shore in New Jersey, all right, not that be confused with the Jersey Shore in any way, all right? Um, we are at the southern tip down here. A lot of air conditioning systems and ductwork is in attics over here. There's just not a whole lot of room to put them, and there's no, certainly no basement. All right, so we got to put these units in up in the attic. I, I've used the older style units, okay, because what I can do is I can uh, take the back ducting, and I can come down through the attic steps and come out through a window, all right, and then I can cool the attic while I'm working in. I might have one or two of these units up in the attic while I'm working in there just to try to make it semi-bearable, you know, to be replacing an evaporator coil um, or a fan coil or maybe it's even a furnace and air conditioning system in the middle of summer, okay? Uh, otherwise, you're, you know, going to be risking, you know, heat stroke or whatever it may be, you know, just from working up in that heat. And you got to constantly take breaks and stuff like that. It's nice to be able to put your face up against this thing. You know, take a take a take a few breaths, you know, and um, you know, just uh, cool off for a second, and go ahead and get back to work. All right. So, just so you know, I just want you to know what I'm doing out there. All right. And uh, these units right here, these older style units, have condensate catches on the bottom. All right. And the exhaust is not too hot. All right. Compared to these ones, all right, that try to evaporate and try to get rid of the condensate out the exhaust. I've tried to take these up in attics before and they, they do not work, all right, because uh, um, maybe you might find a, a different manufacturer that would work, but this particular one would not work because it would go off on high, high pressure, high temperature, all right. Uh, but, uh, but this unit right here uh, works fine out of run.
and that'll run just fine up in the attic. It might be 100 degrees up in the attic, and this thing will will run. All right. Um, so, and then this is this is where the uh, the the back hose connects to on this unit. All right. So I just wanted to let you know how does a HVAC tech tech replace a fan coil or an evaporator coil in the attic in the middle of summer how in the world do you spend that much time up in an attic that's that hot all right and, and this is how i do it all right um when i do this i usually put a pan underneath of it and i monitor that pan all right uh, make sure it's not getting full of water all right so you want to do something to make sure that you're not spilling condensate in somebody's house while you're while you're doing these things all right but that's it Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.